All right, welcome to pinball worksheet number two. Uh, this one's only one page, so they crammed it on here. So let's get started. Um, so it says uh, when you go back into Scratch to go back to your assignments, just click on My Stuff right there. Um, here's my pinball video example. So then you click on See Inside, and then you can see your project. All right, this is where we left off, um, even with the, the fun stuff here. All right, um, let's move on. Um, okay, so the first thing we want to do is make some friction. So in order to do that, we're going to, instead of putting that on the ball, we're going to just put it in the world, which is this, what we call the stage. So. Uh, we're going to give the world some friction. And we'll be able to control this friction if we create what we call a variable. Okay? To create a variable, we go to data and say make a variable. And since it's friction, we're going to say friction. Okay, so it's called friction. And then we say, okay. Um, okay. Let me try that again. There's a couple of things. Make variable. And it says for all sprites. So friction. Yeah, it says to make sure it's for all sprites. On the stage, it automatically does that. But when you put it on something else, it gives you a choice. I didn't, didn't look at that. Sorry. Okay, so friction, all sprites. We'll be able to see the variable. All right, so we say OK, and there it is. So the next thing says to make a green flag event handler that sets friction to 1. Green flags events, so there it is under events. So we say when the flag is clicked. And to set it, we go back to data where we created it. And we can actually say set friction to. It defaults to 0, but we want it to say 1. And then it says, make an event handler for the letter F. Okay, so events again. So space key, change it to F. That subtracts 0 0.001 from friction. So to subtract it, you want to change it. And if you're subtracting, just make this a negative number. And 0 0.001. One. All right. So we'll use that number later. And then we need to make an event handler for the letter R. So events again. And then say uh, when space key is pressed, but to change that to the letter R. Just, just mouse over that. Don't click on it. Just mouse over it. And then say R. And we want to set it back to uh, one. So it's kind of like a reset button. So go back to data and then say set to one. Set to one. Now, instead of doing that, we could have right clicked on this and said duplicate and set it over there, but I didn't do that. Now you know. Um, test it to make sure it works. So I'm going to hit the little green flag. And right here, um, it says friction is one. So what happens if I hit the F key? It changed it. And if I hold that down, it keeps changing it. So friction can be modified by just a tiniest little bit at a time. And if I want to go back to no friction, I just hit R, and it goes back to one. <clears throat> All right, so now let's actually make those apply to the ball. So to do that, we Click on the ball. Click on the ball. And I'm going to stop the program so it's not going to lag. And let's say here. Okay, click on your ball. In your forever loop, so right here in forever, we need to add a command. Okay, so that says. Set speed to speed times friction. Now speed is right here, so we're going to set speed. 
let's do that at the top here. Set speed to speed times friction. Now you can't just type in the a times symbol in there. You actually have to come here to operators. That's how it is in Scratch. Um, and grab this little times um, operator. And we want speed times friction. To get those, we go back to data, say speed and friction. And then just drag that in here. Okay. So the benefit of Scratch is the majority of the time you don't have to type out stuff. You just drag and drop. Because sometimes it's almost faster to type it. So this is for beginners to prevent them from having typing errors. But eventually we'll move on to typing it in by hand in another unit. Um, so don't get too used to this. All right. Let's see if it works. So let it go. The ball's moving around. So we're, if we take speed times friction, right now friction is one. So anything times one is just gonna stay the same. But as soon as I hit the letter F, the it's gonna be timesing it by 0.999 over and over again. And that ball is gonna be slowing down slowly, but it's slowing down. If I want it to slow down faster, I just keep holding down F until there's a lot more friction. Now I can hit the up arrow and speed it up again and see how fast it slows down. And what's cool about this is you can fine tune the friction in your world till you like the way it works. So instead of, instead of having to type it in and keep typing it in, now we can just use two letters to modify it as, as the program is running and we don't have to stop it. So that's really cool how variables work. All right. Um, uh, next, next part is called uh, create a kicker. Now a kicker is uh, one of those things that when the ball hits, it bounces off of it and it adds a little bit of speed to it. So we're gonna make something that when the ball hits it, it's gonna push it away, all right? Now, instead of drawing it from scratch, we're gonna use something that already exists. So we're gonna click on the choose sprite from library and try to pick something that's round. Okay, I'm going to just click on ball. What's cool about the ball is it has costumes, which means you can change it to different costumes and change different colors and stuff. All right, so I'm going to pick that and say, okay, and here's a ball. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you want to, you can go into costumes and change it but this this has all these different colors so I would just leave it alone because it's good already um, we're going to give it a name so click on the I and change it from ball to uh, kicker there we go what's next this is so much fun right All right, let's go back to the ball. Mm, scripts of the ball, so on and so forth. All right. We're going to do another if condition here. So in control, if. Now, if the ball touches the kicker. All right. So if it touches the kicker. So in order to know if we're touching it, we need to sense it. So go to sensing. And touching, we'll change the name mouse pointer to kicker. Yay. So if it's touching the kicker, we're going to make it um, bounce away from it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, is make it look at the ball and then turn 180 and bounce off of it. That'll give it a more realistic uh, push off, okay? So once it comes here, we're gonna have it look directly at it and then it's gonna push it away. So that, that way it'll give it more of a, a reflection. Not perfect, but we'll make the pegs perfect later, later when we do the pegs. 
because the kicker is pushing it, we're not going to make it a perfect um, reflection right now. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make the ball just look at the kicker. So to do that, it's under motion. So we're just going to have it point towards the kicker. So it's going to look at it. So touching the kicker, then it's going to turn away from the kicker. 180 degrees. And so it doesn't matter which way you turn because we're going 180. So 180 degrees. Voila. And then we're going to give it some speed. Okay. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either just set the speed to a high speed or you can change the speed. Uh, be careful with changing the speed because every time it hits the ball, it'll just get faster and faster until it gets so fast it just. Uh, can't register collisions anymore. So I'm going to use the set speed for now. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, let's make it. Uh, well, it might tell us what to do here. Oh, it says appropriate number of your choice. Okay. So 15. How about that? So as soon as the ball hits it, it's going to shoot off at 15. No matter what, the, uh, what some people don't like about that is if the ball is going faster than 15 and hits the kicker, then the kicker slows it down. So there is a fix for that. You can, um, I'll do that. Say if, and we can do an operator here. Let's grab this one. and say speed and type in 15. So if the speed is less than 15, then speed it up. Otherwise, it's just gonna skip this and just, it'll, it'll if it's going faster than 15, it'll still bounce off of it, but it'll stay at the faster speed. So it'll try to kick it, but it bounces off before it has a chance to kick it at a faster speed. <clears throat> okay, let's try it and see what happens. So here's my ball, and it sets it to zero, zero. So I'm going to give it some speed. It's going to come off of it. Uh, let me make it in. Boom. All right. So it works. Let me add some friction in there. So the ball is going to slow down, but as soon as it hits the kicker, it, uh, it should speed right back up again. Boom. There we go. See, it works. Yay. Yep. Verify that the ball bounces off the kicker. If friction is enabled, you should see the ball speed up when it hits the kicker, and it is doing that. So here we go. Yay. Uh, if you have time, make another kicker. But here's the, uh, here's, the, here's the deal with that. You have to adjust your code. So if I uh, duplicate this kicker, boom, here's another kicker. You'll notice that that kicker... Um, doesn't interact with the ball yet. So I'm going to go to the ball code and I'm going to right click and duplicate that entire if statement. And all I have to do is change this one, actually two things, huh? two things, change that to kicker two and change this to kicker two. That is a uh, big mistake. If people don't change both of them, then it, the ball acts really weird because if you have it hit this the second kicker but look at the first kicker your angle is going to be really weird anyway so um if you want to see what happens if you do it wrong then and go ahead and try it but i'm going to try to keep this correct on this worksheet here anyway so that's how you make uh multiple kickers um place them where you want them and you're done with worksheet two if you want three kickers, go for it.